Hi, welcome to Sunset Stitches. My name is Trevor Conkergood, and Sunset Stitches is in my home here in sunny Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, Canada. And it's my pleasure to be here today for uh, what we fondly refer to as Free Font Friday around Sunset Stitches because every Friday, uh, since I guess 13 weeks now, we've been releasing a new free font every week. And the font this week is called Digitalk, you guys. Um, <clears throat> this is a fun one. It just looks like the numbers on your old alarm clock. You know what I mean? <laughs> when you used to wake up in the 90s and that's what you woke up to. <clears throat> well, now we've got a font that looks just like it. It's called Digitalk. And thanks to my son, uh, Nicholas, for um, digitizing that for me. Um, Nicholas is not actually here with me today, uh, so it's just me flying solo. Um, but if you guys want to make a comment in the comments box, I'll watch them uh, today. But we're going to talk a little bit about, and I have some news, you guys. We're going to talk about a bunch of stuff today, um, including the applique stitches from last week and um, specifically how you can get them. And um, if you have any questions about that. And um, my latest challenge, the Spirograph challenge for people that do my Floriani workshop. And um, before I forget, though, I have some winners to announce because I have a couple of postcards that I am going to be putting in the mail, you guys. Um, I had said last week, if you were to like or comment or share, I would send, I would draw for a postcard. I got two of them, one for the people from Facebook and one for the people from YouTube. Um, Nicholas helped me figure that out. So thank you, Nick, for leaving me some names here. Um, if we haven't already contacted you guys and you hear your name, just please uh, email me or, you know, social message something. Uh, Debbie Hooper Smith, you are going to get a postcard in the mail from Trevor. Uh, all we need is your mailing address. So Debbie, we're on Facebook. And Jan Jeffers, you commented on YouTube. And so thank you guys. And same goes today, right? If you want to like or comment or share on the feed, then I can um, draw next Friday. I have more. These are postcards, by the way. I embroider directly onto the paper. Um, people always um, kind of marvel at them because it looks like it's all one piece of paper. And that's kind of the magic of this project, right? Is how'd you do that, Trevor? You got embroidery on the back, embroidery in the front. And I'm literally going to put a stamp on this and put it in the mail right on it. So Marilyn, great to see you today from Pittsburgh. Maybe uh, you could win this. So um, that's the plan, you guys. Um, every Friday, it'll be Free Font Friday. From, from now going forward, I'll go live every Friday at around 1 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, I should say that over 3 p.m. Eastern time. 1 p.m. Saskatoon time is what it is. <laughs> Hi, Wanda. Good. How are you doing today? <laughs> so um, the free font of the week is called Digitalk. And um, I would be more than happy to show you guys how to get it. Um, and I thought, you know, last week was uh, another one that was uh, cool broidery bits and both of these fonts when they get really big like this i'm using a middle split and i wanted to go into like how do you do the middle split trevor because that's a great way look how this font you know at here's got a thread on it at two inches it's kind of getting fat but it's still fine you know i could sew that on my shirt here did you talk but <clears throat> This one here, it's going to be too, look at how it's almost as wide as my finger is. So I've used what's known as a middle split. It's a setting, you know, it's not hard to do. Um, if you don't own the Floriani software and you're using it with the, if you're using our fonts with a free version, you probably don't have the ability to change that. So if you're just using the free software, the Creative Express, then you'll have to stick within those suggested guidelines. You know, the, this font, it says on the website, this font is good for between half an inch and two inches. But if you own the paid version, you know, Floriani Fusion or FTCU, then you could easily go beyond that. And I'll show you guys how I do that. We'll uh, go on to the software. Um, 
I had a little bit of news that I wanted to share uh, also today. This is something brand new, um, something that I'm excited about, and I hope that people will really enjoy. Uh, who knows, but we'll give it a try. It's called Digitalk, and it's a new program, a new web show, web program. Call it a TV show if you want. Um, it's a lot. I'll, I will be live every Wednesday afternoon at 3 p.m. Eastern for one hour or less digitizing. Yeah. And I'll talk. I may, it's not a class. It's not a lesson. I'm not teaching. Um, I'll be chatting, um, uh, because I can digitize and talk at the same time. That's one of the cool things about, but this week I'm going to be digitizing the, uh, Winnie the Pooh. And so um, I bet a lot of people would be interested in that, right? Like, how do you take this uh, picture, Trevor, the one, you know, that is literally page 16 from the 100 Acre Woods, which is now, of course, copyright free. And so I don't have to get Walt Disney's permission to do this. I can create an embroidery from this page. And so you'll watch me do it. And to be honest, this one's not the most exciting one of all of them because um it's pretty easy you know it's really just it's some people might say oh cool it's a sketch a stitch or is it <laughs> do you design doodle it or sketch a stitch it or do you punch it uh because the truth is i could do it either way that's the real truth uh, so which way will I go? <laughs> um, to be honest, the, the the I plan to have guests and talk a little bit while we go, right? It's kind of fun to digitize. I'll, I'll tell you, when I was growing up, we digitized embroidery designs um, and had a didn't talk about everything but the design. You know what I'm saying? And when you sat all day beside, it was a small team of, I spent 25 years custom digitizing people's logos with a small staff of around 12 that were either doing the drawings or the sewing them out, you know, or shipping the stuff um, or punching it, right? And it was like a conversation that went on all day long. We digitize and talk all day long. So I'm going to digitalk for you guys. How's that? You can come and ask me questions, but I'm not promising a class. It's not all about how did you do that? Of course, I will answer some questions. I'm not saying that I just may not explain everything that I do, but if you enjoy watching the process, it could be fascinating. Yeah, you can learn. And really any software could learn. I know that it'll be perfect for Floriani owners, but even people that have other stuff might be find it interesting to watch the process. You might get to see me make a patch. This is my latest patch, by the way, hot off the press. I just made these two uh, patches yesterday. Um, I have several different patch making techniques and I do plan to get around to recording them all for you guys on YouTube. But for now, just know that I love making patches and I'm going to Cleveland and I make a patch everywhere I go. You guys, I've got hundreds of patches that I've made. Um, so that's my latest patch. I'm going to be in Cleveland and I thought this would be fun. I've never tried this before. All right. But so bear with me. Do you want to see the trailer for for Cleveland? <laughs> I think it's two minutes long. I'll be right back. I'm going to play you guys. I made this video to share. It's going to go on the pins and needles social media. And I'm trying something new right now. I'm going to show it to you guys live. So I'll be here, but I'm going to push the recording right now. Hi, this is Trevor Conkergood with Floriani. And I'm so excited to invite you to meet me at Pins and Needles in Middleburg Heights, Ohio for uh, three separate wonderful embroidery events. You guys, I'm going to be there on May the 30th uh, for the Save Your Embroidery presentation. And you guys, this is where you learn about all the different types of stabilizers. I'll share our Floriani um, recipes on how to get great results with your embroidery. We'll learn about thread and the different sizes of thread, the different kinds of thread, and all the things you really want to know. Bring your questions and be prepared to learn a lot on that day. And then on the Friday, uh, we have a totally different presentation. It's going to be the patches and postcards presentation, you guys. 
Um, hot off the press, I've got my latest patch here, you guys. I'll just show you guys the embroidery design. I just finished digitizing it and stitched it out, and I can't wait to show you guys. We're actually going to get the embroidery machines out, and we'll be making uh, patches in person that day. Um, that is actually a half-day class, and so you'll be able to choose from the morning session or the afternoon session on May the 31st, but I'll bring all my patches with me, you guys, and literally I've made hundreds of patches, and so I'll bring all kinds of ones to show you guys, and you'll learn four different techniques for making patches, as well as you'll learn to make postcards, you guys, and I love to make postcards everywhere I go. I make a cool new postcard, and I'll bring um, all of my postcards with me so you guys can see all of them. And I'll have a special postcard. I'm working on a new postcard just for you guys with the uh, Cleveland skyline to go on the cover of it. And so that will be kind of um, news when I get there. Yeah. So and then the final day is uh, a special uh, software lecture day. It's um, special embroidery techniques. And this is where you can learn about applique. And so we'll learn about all the different types of applique stitches. Um, we'll learn about doing layered appliques. And so you can easily kind of remove the underlapping layers. We'll learn about the coolest things from Floriani, like the fuzzy fill and the puffy foam and how to make academy style letters like this. And I'll show you guys how to make spirograph embroidery designs. And um, so this is a very fun day where we'll learn lots of different embroidery techniques with our software. And so you have three days to choose from. You could choose any one day or you could choose all of the days, but please come and meet me at Pins and Needles in Middleburg Heights. You guys, I can't wait to get there. And so until then, I hope you have a wonderful day and thank you for listening. All right. that It's, it's a good thing I'm wearing a different shirt or you'd almost not even noticed that the recording stopped and I came back on again, right? But postcards, right? I mean, I've been making postcards. You guys saw my batch uh, everywhere I've gone since, you know, several years. I made a postcard where I went and I bet you guys would love to see more of them. So I'll find a way to kind of share some of that with you guys. But this is the I love you postcard. And that's the one I said, if you like, comment or share. And so I'll just check and see. Do I have any comments on there? And yeah, some of my friends are here today. So guys, all I'm, what I'm saying is um, make a comment and I'll send a postcard. There's only four comments right now. So your odds are, are going down with every comment that goes on. But that said, there, you know, we don't get that many comments. You got a great chance if you follow us every week. So thanks, David. Um, so that is, uh, oh, so I'm going to go on to my screen now. Um, I'll keep my face here, but I'll make my screen bigger. So let's try this one right here. And um, But then what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap on to the Floriani embroidery software. And yeah, this is the design that I made for Wednesday's live class. Um, basically, I have the actual kind of drawing uh, behind the picture and it's really just a matter of tracing the lines uh, it doesn't take long but um, it's you know you got to click 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 to get it done um, all that said um, I'll probably also do a few of the spirograph designs next Wednesday as well um, I'm just having so much fun with the spirograph designs you guys I mean it like the stitch outs are way more funner than it looks um, <laughs> anyway, and uh, talk about a design in a snap. So if you're not a member of my classes, when you know, when I say FTCU workshop, because I know I, I do a lot of great videos for the RNK Software Club, you know, my job for RNK, the software manager. But um, the difference is in the workshops, they're really more about applied, you know, we're doing stuff and making things. And so there's a workshop and there's challenges, right? And you don't have to do them, but at least a dozen or two dozen people always do. And so the current challenge is called Spirograph. And if you're a member, I hope you're going to make one of these fun embroidery designs. The um, This is a perfect place to use the variegated thread. And this one, it, it was kind of not the best choice because I went with the new camouflage variegated, but um, because it's just single run line on white, 
it was you didn't quite I don't know how well it shows up in the camera is what I'm saying. Had I used, you know, really high contrasting colors, you might be like, wow, look at that. So this is a great time to get out your variegated threads, you guys. Anyway, so I'm going to go back on screen. And I'm going to um, show you where to get the font, how to download it, how to install it, how to use it, how to do the middle split. And then, um, of course, if you guys have any questions, you are more than welcome to ask me so um uh, i will come kind of in and out of the chat is what i'm saying <laughs> because i don't have nick with me today to tell me what the chat's going on so if you guys are chatting and i'm not answering that's okay i'll check in uh but what i'm saying is right now i'm not looking because i'm kind of focused on my screen and um <clears throat> If I go on my website, so this is like the Sunset Stitches website. You um, have a menu at the top. Uh, the first thing you're probably going to want to check out is the embroidery fonts, right? If you go on embroidery fonts every week, there is a new free font. Um, you can just click right there to download it. You know, I'll go ahead and do that right now. I just click. And so the download comes in. It's like going there, right? It's in my downloads, you know, and you could... Um, but don't click open. It's a, it's a zip file. And then once you unzip it, I'm going to show you how to install it. You actually need to use the Floriani software. So really once you've downloaded it, just leave it in your downloads and then we'll come back to that. Uh, and I'll show you how to install it. But while we're here, why don't I also take you, uh, scroll down the page. These are all the previous fonts that you may or may not have collected, um, if you're a member of my class, you'll never miss one, right? Because the class members have access to uh, what we call the archive, right? So if I go on a font, this was last week's font, Broidery Bits, um, and you've missed it, you click on the font archive, and it wants you to be, you know, join or log in. And what I'll say is, here, I'll just log in and show you that when I'm logged in, um, I've got, like access to a whole bunch of stuff that I, I maybe previously didn't. So for example, if I go to embroidery fonts and I go to the um, Digitalk and I go to the archives, now I can download all the past fonts. And here's like the first one to 10 all at one kind of time, right? So, you know, you don't have, if you're collecting, you don't have to download all 10 of them anymore. I've done the one to 10. So here's 11, 12, and 13, but you get it. I'll make another one. But otherwise, um, how do you install them, Trevor? You know, once you get them, um, I'll show you. Uh, and I, but I also want to point out one more thing before we do that. And then that is if you click at the top on embroidery recipe box, here you'll find other stuff, right? Like last week when I shared my uh, applique stitches. Remember the applique stitches from last week? So the applique stitches, um, that's one that um, you can download and also install into your Floriani software. So the I will say the applique stitches are not going to work with the free. If you're using the Creative Express, don't get excited because you really don't have the applique tool, right, to use the stitches with. So it's for the people that are, you know, have the Fusion or have the FTCU, then they get the stitches. But the fonts work with any Floriani software. There's a font tool, even in Creative Express. Um, what I'll do is go back big screen again like this. And um, so if you click on what I said was go to embroidery recipe box and then click on applique stitches. Uh, there's the applique stitches, right? Stitches one to seven. I'm just going to click on download and look, it shows up in my, you know, windows downloads area, whatever that might look different depending on like what browser, if you're using Google Chrome or Microsoft edge or whatever you use Safari. Um, but when you download it, it will be a zip file. And at this point I need to go to like that folder of my computer and I could click open here, or I could just go to my Windows ex file explorer, you know, and, and literally I'll go to downloads. So there are these zip files. And notice when I click on the zip file, there's an option at the top that becomes available called extract all. And I'm just going to click on it and say extract. And so it'll make a folder, you know, it opens up, it opened up the folder 
uh, I can close you if I want because it's right here. You know, there's the zip. And I guess just below it is the folder with the same name. So that's the zip. I don't need it anymore. You could delete that if you want, right? Go ahead and just get rid of it. And same thing with this applique stitches is select that. See, it's a zip because it's got a zipper on the file folder. Notice here the file folder, no zipper. Um, so the one with the zipper, that's the zip file. I'm just going to click. I have it selected because look, if I click on something else, like that's a picture from my computer. But if I click on this zip file, an option comes up here, extract all. And I click on it and it's where do you want to extract it? Right wherever it, you know, here, wherever it is. So I just say extract. And so it shows up, you know, and it pops open the folder, but I'm just going to close it. And just to show you, there's the zip, there's the folder. And once again, I don't need the zip anymore. I'll delete it. In fact, once I install the assets, I don't need those either. So I just keep all this stuff in the downloads folder because I know that I'm going to delete everything in my downloads folder once in a while. You know, it's like a trash can. So it's fine to leave these this font in here. Um, but notice you have a folder now. And if you open it inside of that folder, there are two things. A help file in TXT format. I could click on it. Oh, look, there are printed steps. And then the other one would be the asset file. Don't try double clicking on it because it won't open. It doesn't work that way. You need to use the Floriani software to install. In fact, some people do double click it and then Windows either says, I don't know what to do with it or it guesses. And it's like, maybe it's Adobe. It sounds like an Adobe thing. You know, <laughs> I don't know. AST. But mine, you could tell Windows doesn't know because there's no little icon there. So it doesn't know what to do with it, but but Floriani does. So if I open up my Floriani, and then another thing that I think people kind of do is they click open, and then they go to that folder. They're right, right. It's on my download. So if I go to downloads, right, and then they're like, "There's the folder," but there's no asset file, Trevor. Well, no, because you don't open them. So don't use the open. See, I clicked on open. What you really need to do, and here, let me turn on my, uh, I don't have Nick here to remind me to put on my little yellow pointer, but that little yellow pointer kind of helps me uh, or helps you, I guess, to see what I'm showing you guys. So um, anyhow, so what I'm saying is um, don't click open because you don't open an asset file. Use the tools drop down menu and then look for, now there's two options here. And the main one, if it's a font or a stitches, is import assets. We call those assets. But there is another kind, and that's the import designs. So we have a tool for both. That's how I get the cool designs in my library by importing them there, you know. But today we're importing a font and it's an asset. So I use the tool import assets. And when I click on it, a window opens up that I could use to browse around my computer, just like the open window, right? And now I go, okay, where is it? So um, it's on the, you know, downloads, right? So usually you can find um, downloads in the tree on the left. <clears throat> so I found it, downloads, and there's the Sunset Font 13 Digitalk. So double click, right? And then there it is. I just click on it and say open. So almost done. And I mean, really, all you have to do is say okay. Um, but you know, if before you say okay, you can see it shows you fonts. There might be a whole list here. If I made a really good one, it could say fonts, symbols, hoops, thread charts. I mean, I can give a lot of assets if you get, you know, if I get a lot of people on my Facebook cheering and whatnot, maybe I'll give more stuff away. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But the point is, you can share assets, and this is simply fonts. So when I click here, Notice that it shows me what I'm getting. It's called Digitalk. But notice it's red. Well, yours probably won't be red because you don't have it. Mine's red because I already have it. It knows. I don't need, even if I said okay, nothing would happen because I already have it. Or cancel. It doesn't matter. Either way, nothing would happen. However, I could check it off to be include to be downloaded anyway and I could give it a new name if I want it you know you're allowed to do that and have digitalk too but I don't need to I already have it you guys so I won't import it but if you don't have it yet it won't sh show red it'll show white and it will be checked off so the software knows 
Um, so in the highly unlikely chance that you already have a font named exactly the same as mine, and I mean exactly like it has to be all the uppercases and everything, because you can have more than one version with similar names. So if it's red, it means you've done it already. It's what I'm thinking, right? If, if you get a font, because maybe you get the one that says 1 to 10 and you've got 1, 5, and 8. Well, then those would show up red and the rest of the ones would show up white. Anyway, that's how it works. So if you do get it and it is white and it is checked off and you say, okay, that's what happens, right? Um, otherwise, um, that's how you get them, right? And now you've got a font, cool font you can use and you can click on your text tool and you can click on your circular text tool and click on your embroidery design and it'll put circular text around your embroidery design, right? And it'll go in the font that you used last, which for me is called DigiTalk. And so I can make this say, Trevor, now this is all capital font. There are no lowercase letters. You can tell when you look at the icon for it that there's only a capital ABC because if there was another uh, lowercase letters, it would have lowercase and uppercase. So that's kind of your first visual cue. You know, in other words, if I type in Trevor, with upper and lower case letters, I'm going to get a T, <laughs> right? Because there's no R and the other, and they just don't exist. So there, you type them in Trevor. And now um, I click apply and I can see them. Now you can, the blue handle will uh, tighten up that radius, you know, if I want to, and I could put this anywhere around the circle that I want it to go, right? Isn't that kind of fun? And so once you kind of get that set where you like it, um, there's a black candle on the opposite side, and that is like the size of your text. So, yeah, it's pretty simple to do curved text the other day. Um, when I was doing that patch, you know, for, for the Cleveland patch, the one that I was talking about, um, I got, I was like, this would make a good video because we did a, um, I, I made the perfect baseline for the patch. So that you could take this patch and take the United States of America and make it say um, any other words that you wanted and it would perfectly still stay on that. You know, so I made a baseline and I saved it into the design. Like I made a custom baseline to match the design. That's a really cool thing that you can do when you get into design, like a patch like this. Literally, you could take Cleveland out and type in Portland and then maybe just get like a different silhouette to plunk in the middle, you know, and change the patch. It would be that, it would be that easy for me to go to Portland. Now, all I have to do is type in Portland instead of Cleveland. So, um, that's the baseline, right? You know, and right now I've got a curved baseline, but I can do any shape baseline you want, any shape, and you can save it, you know? So if you have to make a custom one, and that's the kind of stuff that does come up in my classes, right? We'll do stuff like that. I haven't done it lately, but I think it was class one and two. We really dug in on lettering, you know, and we in, we're in workshop for class 16 now, right? Class 16, eh? The next class is the challenge class. That means in the next class, the members will send in their designs and I will get to show them off. And that, to be honest, that's one of my proudest days when, um, when I get all these designs and I go through all the things that people sent in. And I know a lot of you guys watch this, but it's just really rewarding to see the work that people are doing when you give out a little challenge. Like the last month was the embossed designs challenge. And, you know, it was like I made a couple embossed designs for everybody. Show We made some shapes, right? I think I digitized a bunch of shapes and gave them to you guys. But we also learned how to make the shapes just so that if you don't have the shape you want, um, but yeah, we, so we did embossing last month and then, um, it's so fun the class last week to review all of the amazing work that came in. I think there was 25 designs that we looked at in class last week. So, um, the digitizing, the stitches are the same. Let me show you how to install the stitches. So yeah. What do you recommend putting on a bath towel for initials? Embroidery. Absolutely. I would embroider them. Um, no, uh, that's, you know, like we took a shape and then we took the initials, you know, and we used the initial to, um, to emboss, right? So here, here's another one. So in another shape and another, you know, now it's T and C. So the idea is to, um, remove part so that it can kind of be the towel sort of popping up. And I use a mesh fill to kind of, you know, like put it down and, um, I use um, topper, uh, so 
I use the topper. Um, I like to go tone on tone on towels, but some of the ones that were sent in were like very high contrast on towels. And so toppers are really important part of it because it's going to stop you from sinking in, right? That's the big part. There's clear toppers and color keep toppers. I, if you can, you know, if you're doing black embroidery on a white towel and you can get black topper, that's not a bad thing, right? Kind of gives a nice, really blocks out the whole area. So, yeah. Hi, Debbie. That's a good question. What do you recommend for putting on a bath towel for initials? Um, embroidery. I recommend embroidering them. <laughs> the easiest way is just to take script. Like we actually, there's a really nice script. It was from, um, I haven't, we haven't done many scripts. I noticed that we seem to have a lot of, these are all the previous fonts, by the way, you guys, from the, all the different weeks so far. And what I was saying was I thought there was a couple of nice ones. That, I like ballooned. It's one of my favorites. I would do that on towels. Um, but the big quill script, um, the thing with towels, and it's exactly what I want to show you next, is um, they're going to get kind of fat, right? And, and when you look at this sunset here, look at how wide that column's getting. And that becomes the kind of limiting factor. If you're doing embroidery, big size. So when you say embroidery on a towel, I think either embossing where you're negative, you're removing the initials from a mesh to do embossing, or you're positive embroidering, you're doing the satin stitch letters. And if the satin stitches get too long, what do you do, right? That's what I wanted to show you guys today, how to split them. Because I would prefer to do a satin split than a parallel fill on a towel. Um, then it depends on how big it is. Because if it really gets big, and it also depends on the font. It, it, it depends. <laughs> I, I, always, I can never give one answer because it depends. You have to kind of look at if you're going to use a satin split on a towel or if you're going to use so these ones aren't good examples because they are all embossed ones so there's no satin or satin split uh, but we have these are all things that we did in previous classes right in workshop four um but i'll show you guys today what i'm talking about just to give you kind of set you up on the right spot here but the main thing so so debbie's still asking i just wanted to make sure i was asking so if I would embroider initials on that, the embroidery part won't fall apart. Well, that's really the key, right? On a towel, won't fall apart. And that's the main thing. If you want to take any of my fonts, um, I always give a size range of how good they'll, you know, how big they'll be. There's a couple of things you can do for a, a towel. One of them is called nap blocking. And nap blocking can either be with your embroidery on top of the nap blocking. So then it's really just a and that's super easy to do. So, Debbie, I'll show you that. Well, after I show how to split the text, if you stick around, I'll show how to add the nap because it's just a button, you know, and then it's in there. And what that'll do is kind of give a barrier to sort of sew down. And I usually have the topper underneath that. So um, now it makes it really easy to tear it off because um, if you put nap control, um, you won't have to tear the topper out of the inside of the Q or the inside of the O because you'll just kind of tear around the outside of it and you'll see what I mean. Um, yeah, so let's go back on screen. I'm going to share a game like this. And um, so, okay, um, what I said was if your text gets too big, and here's the thing that, that you'll look for is um, how long is the stitch, right? Because in a satin stitch, it's like, from here to there is 0.19 of an inch. Now, this is easier for me in metric, so I'm just going to change mine to metric so I can go exactly how many millimeters is that. So it's five. And and this is what I'm saying is that at this size, so this font is currently, uh, you know, 30 millimeters. That is just over an inch. Well, I think you can get this font to be considerably bigger than that. Uh, before you would need to worry about it, right? So I had said two, around two inches. So if you make this font around two inches, the column will start to get too wide. And and how wide is too wide depends on, again, factors. Uh, if it's the back of a kid's jacket, I'm already concerned at eight millimeters. You know, if it's on a towel, same thing, right? It's like kind of getting long. And, you know, if it's in a framed embroidery, well, no problem. It'll look great in the photograph. You know? But what about after you wash it a hundred times? You know, and that's the, and this kind of bulges this long satin stitch on a t-shirt without a good cutaway would just be so long. So the point is you, when they start to get long, 
And there is a maximum, right? The maximum is 12, but nobody makes a 12 millimeter hat, and that's a half an inch long. That's too long. So this is the point, is you can split it. So basically, when you select your text, there is a properties box. And of course, that's where I went to type in the text, right? Trevor. And that's where I would go to uh, interact with the uh, closest join, or one of my favorites is as digitized. You know, I, I don't, I don't, I want them to um, closest join will cause certain letters to trim right in the middle. See how this one's stopping there because it's the closest. But if I say as digitized, then it moves the trim point to the end of the line. So if I'm not actually going to be closest joining them, I should at very least tell it furthest. So now it'll choose the furthest distance between them so that it doesn't um, try to connect. You know, if you want the threads to trim, you have options. Anyway, all these things are options. But the one I wanted to talk about, I guess I should kind of stop finding other things to talk about is um, up in here in your properties box, it's this one that looks like black dots along a line. You know, it's called splits when you click on it and it's currently set to none. So if I click on the none option, there's middle, there's absolute, there's percentage and there's random. And for this font in particular, middle looks pretty good. Now it's set at seven. So if I click apply, I may or may not get a split. It depends on how big it is. So I did, but I'm only getting it, and this is kind of what's neat about it, I'm only getting it to where the stitch length is long enough. See that? So it's splitting it here, but it's not splitting there. As a, And you can decide, okay, well, maybe six would be better. Let's try that. So it'll make the split just a little bit longer. Yeah. So now, and if I guarantee you, if you grab a ruler and you measure this last stitch that's not split, it'll be just under six, 5.9. Look at that. As soon as it gets to be over six splits, it's pretty scientific, really. And it's easy to do. You just turn it on. But doesn't that now, <laughs> I can go any size with this text. And I really like it. I think that middle split looks cool with the Digitalk. And what was the one from last week? Uh, the broidery bits. Um, so if I get up broidery bits and it's the same kind of thing, right? It's going to default back to the smaller size, but if I, um, go to edit text and I start to make it bigger like that, what will happen is if I don't split it, I'll get spots that'll kind of like have problems. So I can come in here and play with the split links to make them longer or shorter, to make sure that everything gets kind of like a num uh, a bit like that. Yeah, no, there's a spot missing in the V. Well, that's interesting. Oh, got it back. <laughs> anyway, I don't know. I wiggled the button a little bit. I didn't make it too much smaller, but it may have been a size thing. I might've had to have made that number larger. No. I don't know. Now it seems to be just normal. So uh, if you ever seem like you're missing a little bit, maybe try adjusting something. Um, at this point, of course, I would probably use the little blue handles to adjust the letter spacing because it just doesn't seem kind of perfect to me. And so I could easily bring it all back to um, what visually looks good. Because sometimes what scientifically, you know, technically they are, if you get out, oh yeah, I guess they are. A certain if you draw a box around every letter, they might be perfectly the same far apart, but sometimes you need to overlap them depending on the shape of the letter, like the V, where you really need to kind of bring that O and the E into it to make it look good. So this is the thing with how it works here with the text is that if you want to make it bigger, you can use that middle split. That was the main tip that I wanted to give you guys today. And then um Janine, where's it? I forgot already who asked. Debbie said, what about doing towels like that? And I'd said, well, we could look at that, right? Because um, let's just do this. I'm going to click on a new workspace and I'm going to take um, my text tool and I'm going to do, you know, something on a towel. So we'll do um, his and hers towels, you know, that kind of idea. And so I probably wouldn't choose broidery bits for a towel, to be honest. It's kind of a large block satiny kind of thing. I don't, I feel like on a towel, I like more like that big quill, right? That I showed you guys, the one that was, um, and of course, Floriani has tons of beautiful ones. I'm just sticking to the ones that 
we made here, but um, I probably would choose one of the Floriani ones because they have some nice anniversary scripts and stuff like that. Might look beautiful on a towel, but so there's the his, although I think I've got the I in capital here. Let's fix that. His. So it's H-I-S. Now, on a towel, you might want to do this big, like um, four inches tall, you know, and right now it's, if I switch this back on over to inches, it's just over an inch. So if I try and make it, you know, bigger, and now it's like, let's see, three inches tall by four and a half inches wide. You know, that might be nice on a towel. Oh, what's going on, Trevor? It's like losing parts, you know? And, and yeah, it totally is because the satin stitch is way too long. And even the parts that are still there, probably not going to embroider well, right? That's half an inch long, you guys. That's that's why it's losing because it's saying the average home embroidery machine will actually trim those threads out because it's you've gotten so long it thinks they're meant to be trimmed. Um, but the good news is you can come in your properties box and go back to the split tab and turn it on, right? And here, I like the random split and I click apply. And so random split kind of randomizes that split line. It's not so hard looking. And you can see here how the spots that are not getting split are less than the seven. So if you're feeling like that's perfect, then you're ready to go. But if you're feeling like, well, I wish it didn't stop splitting like because, you know, I wish it looked more consistent, right? Well, then make the number smaller, try six. And then you might get that line. Oh, look at that. It started to split quite a bit more. And at some point you'll be like, that's fine. Or maybe it's, you know, go to five, you know. Um, it, notice in the really wide areas, it's actually splitting twice now, right? The S where it's it's splitting all the way through the small areas, not quite through the smallest of small areas. But in the biggest of big areas, it's actually got two splits and they're randomized. So instead of being a smooth line, it kind of, and, and I mean, all of this could be changed. Um, that's a split. You can come in and change the parameters for the minimum and the maximum. You can try the middle. You can try the absolute. You're typing in the amount of the split. So at what? exactly at what distance you want it split at. The other one is percentage. So now you're going to give it a percentage. Um, middle split will go right down the middle. You know, So now you, if it's longer than the amount, it splits right down the middle. And that also looks cool. So you have a lot of splitting. And then, of course, there's just changing it to a pattern fill because all of this is based upon the purple star where it says satin. Yeah, and you could change that satin to be... Um, a pattern fill of any kind, right? These are all, you know, different pattern fills. And now instead of being a split satin, but I, I want to point out the pattern fill is 3,435 stitches. If I hit undo, the split satin was 3,435. Well, that's interesting. No, that's the thread number. Sorry, I'm, don't, I'm misquoting here. Let me go back. Redo. It was, I need to expand the color. It was 7,562 stitches to do it in a pattern fill. And if I undo, then it's 4,700 to do it in a middle split like that. So yeah, you can see the difference. Um, the thing with the splits versus the, the pattern fills is really about the texture. It's about how it looks. Because when you're using satin fills, I think the thread shows off a little bit more. And so, yeah, anyway, thanks, Debbie, for asking that. Oh, I never showed, don't let me forget, the nap control, right, before I move on from this. But so that, you know, I wanted to talk today about adding splits to, to text because I share a lot of fonts, and I think that the sizes can be made bigger. Um, all that said, if you want to put this on a towel, I think it's going to be hard to get the topper out of the inside of the S. You know, sometimes it's like little tiny nooks and crannies that you got to get it out of. And if you come up to the top, the little postage stamp here called nap control, and you just click on that, you can decide how far around your embroidery you want that to go. But when you say, okay, it will make a mesh. That mesh will automatically sew before your text. And it gives you, see now, um, if I would have made the mesh bigger, it would have even kind of, really, I'm thinking, what if I just have to trim around the outside and not around the inside like that? You know, and that's not wrong to kind of flatten down that whole area. What I do is do this color tone on tone. 
So if I'm going to do Trevor on, uh, on like, I, sometimes I wear my polar fleece vest or my polar fleece hoodie, and it says sunset stitches across the top, but it's a white polar fleece. Well, you can't see this color. I sewed this color white on the white polar fleece. You can't see it. You only see the red. You'd have to get, I'd have to stick my chest right up to the camera for you to be able to see that. So that's, it's like I said, it's just a button up here, nap control. And that's so really when you say, what would you do on a towel? That's what I would do. That was last month, by the way. It, actually, that's, I'm wrong. Last month's challenge was not the embroider on a towel challenge. In fact, some people didn't even do towels, right? What we did was embossing, you know, and the whole point was to learn how to, knock the tape the t out of the shape right now we got a bunch of cool shapes i gave you guys a whole bunch of cool shapes to do and then and and you could take any one of these shapes and put your initials in and so it was a good challenge but this month's challenge is a ton of fun right the spiral graph who doesn't want to do that um this one just geeks me out by how cool the the red and the blue there's it's 48 12 red 12 blue 12 red 12 blue um just a circle um anyway when when you get into it in the class it's, there's a lot of things and so next week in my digi talk i'll make some more for you guys just to help you out with that um i'm forgetting something and i don't remember what it is um i'm really excited to say uh loren has been in the studio with me this week um look at the talented kid that i have here hey um she does these cool bird on branches. We're we're preparing to uh, release the final downloads of Trevor and Friends Embroidery Club Season 2. <laughs> the the never-ending embroidery club that Trevor started in 2019. <laughs> and we still have three downloads to down to, to, to release. And the, it was a series, you know, every month there was a, or every download. I say every month, but that is a sure a, a real snicker. <laughs> It was not, it was to be 12 downloads and each download had a whole series of videos and designs. And um, literally the day that I took the job at RNK was the day that it just like and kind of backed up. And that was also the time that Loren went to do her fine arts degree. And so Loren just finished her bachelor of fine arts and she's, you know, re-entering the workforce and just going to, she won't be able to work here full time. I can't afford it, everybody. Uh, and Nick's already working here, but Loren is doing some work for me um, right now, and it's awesome. So very, very talented. I wish I could, y'all would buy everything I have, and then I could employ them all because she is, uh, her passion is not to be an embroidery designer, but very talented artist, I'll tell you that much. Um, but but we're happy when we get them. So you know what it's like with kids, right? You'll take what you can get, right? That's how I can say. Um, so you guys, it's Free Font Friday. And I'm going to go live every Friday for about a half an hour like this throughout this week. It's turned into the longer, but um, my plan is to try and go live every Friday and with a little bit of news, a little bit of tip and a new free font. Um, if you guys have something you want to ask me, just let me know. But um, thanks for saying that those designs were beautiful, you guys, because um, I'll let Loren know that you said that they are not a Facebook kind of person or whatever. So <laughs> Anyhow, um, I'm just looking at the comments to see if I missed anything while I was uh, doing, because um, sometimes I can't see them, whatever. Candy said, I love the nap control. And hi from Tulsa, by the way. Say hi to everybody at the Be So In for me. Tell them I miss them. I've been there since before the pandemic. And so it must be time, right, to come back. I would love to visit again. Um yeah, but I am going to be in Cleveland. So it's a three, three one-day event. So some person could travel to Cleveland and do the whole thing. But it's um, every, everybody who lives in Ohio, I hope to meet you guys there. It's gonna, that's going to be a lot of fun. My latest patch. Um, I am planning to do a um, one of my uh, embroidery recipe box series on patches. So um, we want to do a really good job of that. And so we've been kind of working on that. But um these patches have the good extra special glue on the back of them. So, um, of course, they'll have that stuff with me when I'm there at Pins and Needles. Yeah. Uh, do you guys have any questions or anything you want to chit-chat about before I let you go for today? But I hope you'll enjoy this week's 
free font, which if I can remember correctly is Digitalk, which is the reason I called it Digitalk was in, uh, well, no, that's not true. The reason I chose Digitalk for this week is in honor of the class that's starting next week, Floriani Digitalk with Trevor Conkerkin. And um, it's kind of a throwback because I used to do my Digitalk. Digitalk was the name of my Digitalk, my embroidery classes from 2008 to 2015. I did 27 DVDs for the Genomi Digitizer software. And we used the, we called it Digitalk. Anyhow, um, nowadays it's Floriani Digitalk. And I'm going to be doing Winnie the Pooh on Wednesday. And so I'm actually going to post it so that you guys can like, you know, sign up or whatever. It's not a sign up, but it's express interest or however that works. On YouTube, you can just say, there's a button that says uh, remind and it'll notify you when I go live. That's probably your best bet. You know, it's easy. Sometimes on Facebook, people are having troubles finding this stuff. But if you go on YouTube and you say remind, it, I think it's pretty reliable. Um, but I do have it on Facebook now. Uh, I'm tr going forward, I'll try and do all these things with a little reminder and I'll do it like a week, uh, you know, several days in advance. So for next Friday, we'll post it up. It'll say, did you talk uh, for the, you know, for next Friday? And you guys can say you're interested. You can even share it with your friends if you want. Uh, but if you have comments like more script fonts or just remember, that's the only way you can win the postcard, right? And I will be mailing out postcards. I've got one for Debbie Hooper-Smith and Jan Jeffers. You guys are going to get one of my cool postcards, which... I seem to have lost now, but um, I've got a whole buck of them over here uh, that I've made up that are all ready to go. And so I've even got ones that say season's greeting. So I'll save those ones for later in the year. <laughs> but right now we're working on the I love you cards. And um, maybe I'll do one uh, when I'm in Cleveland. I'll send one from Cleveland. <laughs> Greetings from Cleveland or something. Okay. That's it. You guys, thank you so much. I'm just checking the last comments to see who's here. And thank you so much, Marilyn. It's nice to see you guys. Um, please say again when the Friday event. So every Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern time is going to be called Free Font Friday. And every Wednesday at 3 p.m. Eastern time will be Digitalk. So I'm going to do two per week now. Fridays will be light and quick, probably a little shorter than today, typically, and we'll get the news and a new font, and we'll do some chat and questions. And on Wednesdays, I'm going to be digitizing designs, and you may uh, find that fascinating. And so tune in and check it on out. Um, until then, you guys, I will watch my Facebook uh, questions. And as always, I'm happy to hear from you guys by email. My email is uh, trevor at sunsetstitches.com. That didn't work very good. My face is literally over the, uh, my address there at the bottom, trevor at sunsetstitches.com. Um, until next week, uh, until Wednesday, have a wonderful weekend, guys. Bye for now.